고 오리야! 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 You enjoy you enjoy Injami? What? You enjoy Injami? Not like you enjoy Injami. <laughs> so it's all going back on you. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid race. It's a Corbin. <laughs> now I'm going to think of that song as Enjoy Your Money. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick. <laughs> Anyways, today we're doing a movie review. You Boca Chodos. Oh. Uh, even though you might not, you're from Malayalam, so. Uh. Hey, right. Why are you cussing at them in Bengali? I don't know. I just yeah, like right. cussing. Uh, today we're doing a movie review of the 2019 film Android Kon Japan. Wait a minute. I watched Ex Machina. I guess it's kind of like X. It <laughs> <laughs> both have robots. Robots, that's about it. Um, Android Kun Japan version 5.25. Uh, directed and written by Rathish Balakrishnan Podava. And starring Subin, Subin Shahir, Suraj Venjuramudu. And a couple uh, other people. Those Kenny Zirdu. Yeah, those are. He played, and Saiju Kurup. Yeah. Prasanna. Uh, he was the robot, right? Ken yeah. Kendi? No, no, no. That's his, um, um, his girlfriend. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. It was Sorjab. Sorjab? Suraj. Suraj. Telekadu. Uh, who played uh, the robot, like old school Star Wars droid style. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's gone to for all of you. If you haven't seen it, it came out 2019. Go watch it. Come back. Because uh, we're just going to go right into it. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Way more that I liked than didn't like. Uh -huh. I liked it. I didn't love it. Yeah. Um, it's worth watching. Most especially, I think the premise is, we saw this in the trailer, the premise is very original. Yeah. The, um, the writing is very good. The acting, especially from our dad and our son. Yeah. And I, I really, I liked it her too yeah um but the dad especially was i i just here's a question how long did it take you to realize who it was do you realize who it was who the dad maybe i don't holy shit you don't no one it's not an old guy oh i know that okay i knew that it's the husband from great Indian from great in kitchen. kitchen oh and the the uh, the necklace one with the fafa wow that's him Wow. <laughs> we didn't realize it in the trailer reaction. And then I, I'm like, I know, I, while I was watching it, I was like, okay, I know, the, I know, I know this guy. Right. Where the, do I know him? So I stopped it and I, I looked up on IMDb and I'm like, oh shit. Uh, no, and yeah. so, great, I didn't know that. Great job on makeup. But I, I, I agree. Uh, I like this film quite a bit and I, I, I commend them for trying something in the sci-fi yes. genre. And it's worth watching just to support yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, I, because I, you don't get that a lot, especially with. Because I'm not so much like, I know you, they've done stuff like the stuff that's extremely over the top CGI, like 2.0 and, and stuff that, that like that. But the fact that it's kind of like old school sci-fi where it's a guy in a, in a robot costume or something, because that's like, that's old school yeah. uh, sci-fi or Star Wars or, or whatever. Um, and it, it kind of brings an endearing quality to it agreed i would much prefer this style over unless it's great cgi right like if it, you can do either great cgi or this i am so glad <laughs> they went this route yeah rather than cgi that doesn't work yeah because um, if you did something this close and this intimate you got to have x machina level cgi yeah, i totally agree yeah. but yeah uh though i think it fell off a little bit in the second half for me um, and like I, if it's four acts, the third act. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say it fell off a little bit for me. They might have been able to trim like maybe twenty minutes off the film. I yeah. think, and it, it could have been a, a little more snappy. I believe this is the director's first ever venture. Oh wow! Uh, let's see. Let me see if I'm correct here. I might be talking out my asshole. Uh, let's see. Yes. Yeah. It was you're a, right. it was his directorial debut. So for a directorial debut. Hats off to you, man. Really good. Uh, but you can see some of the, I think, the newness of a, of a new director, um, which the first half I thought was great. And I was like, okay, cool. We're getting into the second half here. This is going to be just as good. And then it just kind of, I don't know. I don't really know how to fully explain it because it wasn't like the second half was bad. No, there's no it, It's similar to the, the, the boxing film. 
uh, that that we watched in terms of we said the third act kind of fell off a little bit. Yeah, I agree. And not because it was bad; it's just it it didn't it wasn't as good I think as the first half. Yeah, and it kind of veered off from because I was really interested in in Subin's character mm -hmm. and and even his girlfriend towards the beginning, and it, those kind of got pushed to the wayside a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't. It, it's like I said, I, I like this film. Yeah, there's way more to like. Like a lot. Um, and I, I really enjoy the concept. It's a fun, easy watch, honestly, in terms of like, this is not like um, Kumbalaji Nights where it's like, you're going to have a big reveal at the end, a big right. reveal, whatever. It's like, this is kind of like, almost like, Mimi in terms of you can That's just kind of easily watch. literally what I was just going to say. Yeah. In the same way that you can watch Mimi... This is like a really great... This one rainy... won't make you as angry as me. Man. Yeah, it won't. <laughs> this is a really great rainy day. Just make some soup and, you know, watch a matinee and, and really enjoy some good acting. A very interesting story that has... I love anything that talks about artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, I just... I, I love it. Yeah. And I felt like this did a very good job of uh, taking... A, what can be, as is presented in one of my favorites, we mentioned already, Ex Machina, taking something extraordinarily complex and making it just very simple and showing, as I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if one of the intentions behind the film is to make us realize we're already there. Mm -hmm with technology. Yeah, they did. We're, we're already, we already have a robot like 5.25 in our phones, yeah. in our TVs that we are attached to. Technically, Tesla is making a, a working robot they just announced. Oh. Uh, <laughs> like a human. The Japanese have already done it. <laughs> oh that. yeah, yeah. But now Tesla's done it. Oh uh, yeah. But well, he's, he has said, as did, I think it was Stephen Hawking, who was one of the first ones to say that the potential for well, that was artificial the opening intelligence. Quote, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. He, Hawking went into depth about the one thing that he was certain could end the human race would be the advancements that could happen in AI. And I remember seeing a short video of Elon Musk being asked, you're on the cutting edge of technology, what are some of the things that scared you? Because like back in World War II, it was nuclear discovery. Yeah. And he said without blinking, what's happening with AI is terrifying if you realize what can happen. Yeah. Yeah, it really it's, is. It's true. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, let's talk about, I think there's, there's two stars, Subin as well, but Sur Suraj, who played the dad, I thought... He he stole the show. I thought 100%. this. Was, I thought this was going to be a a Subin. Uh, I'm saying his name correct. I don't want to mispronounce. I think that's name. correct. Subin. I, I uh, Subin. And if he did a great job, and we're going to get to him. But I think yeah. the star of the show was Suraj, Suraj. especially playing a much older man, very convincingly. I 100 percent believe. I 100 percent believe. If I had never seen him in in those two things, right. I would have 100% believed this was a, 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 a really old actor. Absolutely. Without any question, I would have been shocked to find out he's not that age. Yeah. Um, he, he carried himself much different than he did in the, the other two films we've seen him in. Yeah. He, like, it, uh, almost like we've talked about with Daniel Dillers, he, he kind of let the, uh, the meat hang off his bones a little differently, yes. I feel like. And so he, and he was an impressive actor in those other things, but this, this really elevated him for me. I thought he did a great job. And it reminds me as well, we'll continue to talk about the acting, but... He did stuff, you know, the last film that we had reviewed, I talked about the fact that th we both agreed it was overscored and we needed it to breathe. Mm -hmm. Not only was the score lovely in that regard, where yeah. there were so many spots where I didn't even realize the score came back in. Yeah. And I went, oh, there it is. And it was perfect. And he, the director did a great job of allowing the actors to be actors. Yeah. And like... One of my least favorite notes to receive because it evidences a lack of understanding of the art form. And you'll get it a lot. You'll get agents or even a director or a casting director say, I like that. I like the, the choices that you made with that. I'd like to get it a few more levels. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd like to get a few more levels. Um, I, I, I'd like you to give us a little bit different, more shades and colors. These kind of ambiguous things that have really no place in regular behavior. I don't know what that means. When I'm talking to somebody, I'm never ever thinking about, you know, the, the, the shades that I'm giving at that moment. You just are being <laughs> Mostly at any gray, moment. Yeah. So I, I really felt like the emotional availability of everybody and the sense of, like, it wouldn't surprise me if the director 
was Clint Eastwood style and just didn't say action, just kind of let them go and then just started rolling cameras. Yeah. So it really felt grounded. Absolutely. Everybody could breathe. They weren't concerned about pacing unless it was organic. That's probably my favorite part of this yeah. was his lead acting and the supporting acting that gave this real believability. Yeah, Malayalam. Yeah. They're so phenomenal at natural grounded acting. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm writing. the most consistent that we've seen um, I'm not going to say the best because we've seen great thing from, from every single uh, No, but it's the most language, consistent. But in terms of consistency of the 20-something, I think, Malayalam films we've seen, it's, it's almost throughout, without maybe one exception that I can think of, that that it's all great natural acting, mm -hmm. which, of course, is, is our usual preference. But, yeah, he did such a good job. His chemistry with Subin as his son was great. His chemistry, I thought he was a grumpy old man just walking through the, um, the, 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 the village, interacting with other people who are, I think that's the grumpy old man of the yeah. village. And some um, of his best lines and some of the best lines throughout, there are so many little throwaway funny lines mm -hmm. that are so wonderfully acted and directed because they're not done for the laugh. No. Like, it's, the all, it's all deadpan. It's yeah. all deadpan. And that's what makes it funny is that you're not playing for the laugh. It's just funny because it's funny. Like the moment in the trailer when he's sitting there and he's talking about, oh, well, here, before we marry girls, we have to rape them or burn them. Mm -hmm. He was serious. Yeah. And that's what makes it funny. He wasn't kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and there were so many funny little throwaways like that. There's a that. bunch of stuff about cast in this as well. Yeah. And there's a bunch of different lines like that. Because he was the guy, he was a very... Um, uh, I think they called him conservative uh, old man here, mm -hmm. uh, but he, he was like really prejudiced against a bunch of different people, yeah, yeah. which kind of like is a, a, I guess we've mentioned his name in here before, like a Clint Eastwood style old man character, like yeah. a Gran Torino. Gran Torino, That's exactly. Actually, uh, that style of character, um, I thought he did such a good, and on the score that you talked about, the, there was moments where it was really subtle, moments where it wasn't there at all, mm -hmm. which I love. Mm -hmm. um, and also moments that it got like scary music, like suspense music yes. there for a little bit, even though that's not really what this film is. Yes. But it leads you to believe a little while that that's what this film's going to be. Right. Um, it, yeah. it never becomes like an ex machina, but sometimes it believes you that it's going to become. Well, and it's Malayalam, so yeah. I was ready for yeah. a bloodbath to happen or something <laughs> crazy weird. Yeah. And I did, okay, so... We really haven't given away any spoilers, so if, if, if this is probably a good place to go, yeah. and we're gonna start spoiling. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't seen it, go see it and then come back. I I was surprised by and liked the ending. I was I was concerned we were gonna get a cliche where the robot killed somebody, and I liked the fact that we were put in a position at the end where the dad has to choose between the robot or the son, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. Um, and that. I, I believed and I empathized that that wasn't an easy decision. I, I kind of came moment. up with a, like a little twist ending, though, in my head. You did? What is the well, ending you twisted to? At the end, it, it, had, it showed the dad on the back of the motorcycle, and then it turned into the robot. And he said the robot's name. Yeah, yeah. so I didn't know if like he was kind of almost hallucinating in the, in the heat of the <laughs> moment, and the robot actually killed the other son. That could be it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just thinking too no, much into it. But. I actually think the director let you lead in. It's either yeah. he's wishing he had the robot back yeah. and his son is reminding yeah. him of the robot. Yeah. Or it is that. <laughs> or, yeah. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I was just like, I, mean, I might be reading a little too much into this. but Because it was almost, uh, I don't know if you've seen the Joaquin Phoenix film, um, Her. Oh, I love Her. You, you saw Her? Yes. There's almost elements of that sometimes. Another AI. Yeah, with... With um, the dad and the robot at times. Yeah. It was almost like, I was like, oh, are they going to go for like full on? He's going to have sex with this robot. <laughs> right. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, and they never fully got there, obviously. If but... you haven't seen Her, it's a great artificial intelligence moral conundrum movie starring Joaquin Phoenix. And it Shocker, has... Shocker, Joaquin's uh, uh, really good name. Yeah, what a surprise. And Scarlett Johansson is the voice yeah. of Her. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah. The, I, Subin. Subin. So, so good. Uh, he was very different than the other stuff we've seen him in. I, I liked that a lot. He's I love that he was the lead in this because it's it's like watching the, the progression of Nawazuddin. Because mm -hmm. he's not 
your standard hero. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. And I was I was excited actually towards the beginning. I was really into his his love relationship Me with too. with her. And I was kind of sad it almost got put on the back burner a little bit or sh and she, I liked her at first a lot, and then she kind of annoyed me as it went it on. Got a it, it sadly I don't know why they made her have lost. the laugh thing either. I, uh, I, the, I don't the understand. <laughs> we Molly Adams are so funny. Yeah, because <laughs> at times I'm like, okay, she's doing great. Right, uh, she's doing great. She's quirky. And then the other times I don't know what, <laughs> like, I don't know what this note was that the director gave her. No, uh, and so that that but was, she, she for the most part yeah, I liked her a lot. For the most part I, I liked her. It's just I don't. There's few choices that either she made or the director asked her to do that I was just like, I didn't understand. Well, I actually, in that third act that we said, kind of kind of gets in this, for lack of a better term, a, term, a, a rut. Yeah. Or kind of just misses its pacing or misses where it's going. I would have liked to have seen two things that I've had a vested interest in. I would have liked to have seen more of their relationship. Yeah. And I love the relationship he had with his old friend that he's talking to through the robot on Facebook. Yeah. I wanted to see more of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just slight nitpicking because again, like the film, uh, I felt like everybody else, <laughs> I thought the opening scene where he's explaining, okay, you have to do this and it's 14 times and you got to do this. Yeah. I, I thought it was really yeah. uh, wonderfully biting satire. And, and kudos to Su say his name? Suraj. Suraj, who played the robot. Um, I talked about it at the beginning. I'm so glad they went with this yeah, as too. opposed to full CGI if they couldn't get... Because obviously, I think they, they talked... I heard they talked about it, but for, due to budgetary... They saved a lot of money. Yeah, one, yeah. And see, to make CGI look really good, it costs a ton of money. It's worth it if, if you, if you if put you enough good. money into it. Yeah. Um, like and you could get it to you know Marvel level in the, the terms of like you can't even tell what's CGI anymore in in terms of and, or it's one of the things I love and if I I'm not mistaken, Ex Machina got visual mm -hmm. effects Oscar and I was yeah. so thrilled because like makeup, visual effects that are subtle and small are so beautiful for, yeah. to me and that's one of the things about Ex Machina is that the visual effects are all so small. Yeah, but price. Um, I I want to shout out to him because. Putting, choosing to put a human in the robot brings a human element to the robot. It does. And so even though you can clearly tell it's a person in a robot suit, right? <laughs> like it's obvious, just like it was in Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just, it, it kind of brought me back to Star Wars almost a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like he, he was a droid. Yeah. Um, and, and he moved like this. Yeah. <laughs> C-3PO. Who was the actor who played C-P-3? Um, Kenny Baker. Yeah. Famously. Oh, wait, no. That was R2-D2. Um, Anthony Daniels played That's C-3PO. Right. Uh, it still does. Yeah. Uh, and he has to walk a certain way. Yeah, Kenny Baker's R2-D2. Anthony Daniels is C-3PO. But he, I thought he did a really good job as the robot in terms of um, uh, making you care for him and, and with his movements. Because it's, it's, it's not easy mm -hmm. to do what he does. It's almost... A, I don't want to say puppetry, uh, but it's 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 a different style of acting, and it has to be consistent. Yeah, because if you're moving one way in the film, and then later on you change the way you're moving, it it you'll notice those nuances of body language. Yeah, and it was consistent. Yeah, so I, I overall I really liked, I really loved the concept of the film. I would love to see more sci-fi, uh, not like I don't need like in terms of big CGI war film CGI. Right, I'm talking simple. Uh, simple um, sci-fi. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons why, and it makes sense, you don't see a lot of sci-fi coming out of Indian cinema or even, for example, short films and student films that are made because you're running into cost problems. But... Usually it's otherworldly. And, correct. Yeah. But this is a great example of taking an original premise and telling a very good story with a message in it. And you don't, you can do a sci-fi film without spending a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, just have, and that's one of the things we've commented over and over again that we love, particularly about what's coming from Malayalam cinema. So many original ideas mm -hmm. and gambles. This is a gamble. Yeah. And I, I, I want people to watch this because this kind of mm -hmm. endeavor and creativity ought to be supported. More, more films like this. We talk about we want more original films. Well, they need the box office to 
have producers go, oh, investing in that makes us money. Well, we'll invest in more things like that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let us know what's the next Malayalam film that we should watch. If you've got other sci-fi recommendations, please let us know. And of course, uh, we need to watch oh. more Subin and uh, Suraj. Su Suraj as well. What should be their next films of ours that we should watch? Let us know down below.